In this video, we're going to create a very simple hook shot mechanic that will let us swing around a scene using a grappling hook. It's fairly rudimentary, um, but it is more simple than anything I managed to find uh, on YouTube at the moment. It utilizes physics, and I've included the very rudimentary uh, platform control system, which you'll probably want to look at upgrading if you're serious about using this. So the way that I'm going to go through doing this is just show you the nodes, but we're going to start with the player first. So the player has a rigid body, which I've called player. I save the scene as player. It also has a sprite 2D. You can use whatever sprite you want. Animated sprite, doesn't matter. It has a collision shape, of course, and it has a raycast 2D. Now, that's all we need for the player. And in the world, I've got a root node called world. I've got some textures here. That's just background stuff. Um, also a tile map layer. The tile map, uh, these objects uh, have physics on them. So there's a physics layer on them and it's marked. I've only marked these ones out here, just these platforms, just for testing. There's also a camera. That's all optional. How you do the, how you do the thing that you can hook onto is optional. The tile map though, is in a group called hookable. So this is going to be something that you can hook onto. Anything you want to be able to hook onto, it needs to be a static body and it needs to have the word hookable. Actually, it doesn't need to be static, just a physics body that you can interact with uh, and will be hookable. So the main part of this is the pin joint. The pin joint uh, goes somewhere in the scene. It, it really doesn't matter where. I've turned the softness all the way up to 16. That gives it a little bit of flexibility. looks kind of like it's springy a bit. And node A should be set to the player, which is also in our scene. The player uh, is going to be the only thing here. We don't need to assign node B at the moment. On the player, I've also added a line 2D. That's on the player there. And don't worry about these numbers there. They don't matter. Um, you can leave them empty for now. Um, but down here, you want to have a texture. Okay. And I've made a little rope texture. and then. Down the bottom for texture, you want to enable repeat, enabled. Texture mode should be set to tile. Then I've got a static body called hook point. This static body has a collision shape. I'll go into this here, I'll zoom in up here. It has a collision shape. It has a sprite 2D. And I've set the kind of the hook area to the center of the static body. And then I've got a marker 2D. This is what the uh, other end of the line is going to connect to from the player to this marker here. So how this works is a pin joint will take two objects and then um, let them swing freely uh, between the pin joint itself. Um, so if you've ever seen one of those little ball bearing things on a, on a table where you lift it up and it, it swings down, the other one goes up, the bit at the top would be the pin joint. Um, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually set the hook point and the pin joint to the same position so that the player rotates around it freely. So the code for that looks like this. But first, pin joint, make sure your player is assigned to there and nothing is assigned to node B. The hook point doesn't really need anything here. We just got clear shape sprites, whatever sprite you want to use. You don't need to have a sprite for this. Um, you don't even need to have a line 2D. This is all just optional stuff. So let's go into our player code. I'm going to add some code to our player. And it's going to look like this. So we're going to type this up. It's going to take a little while to get through. Um, so I might copy and paste parts of it. And you can just pause it. The variables at the top are going to be various references. So we're going to get a reference to our Raycast 2D. We're going to get a reference to our uh, to the speed. Um, I don't actually think that I use the speed variable. Um, that was something I was trying to do with retracting stuff, so you probably can ignore that. We're going to get a reference to the hook, which is a static body 2D, and a reference to the pin joint, which is a pin joint 2D. And we'll get a reference to the line, dollar sign line 2D. We have a variable hooked, which is going to start as false. And we have a variable for the line end, which is the marker 2D. So now if I go back to my world, I can assign these variables. So on the player, you'll see I've got the hook and the pin joint. I wanna put the pin joint into there 
and I want to put the hook point into there. So now we can go back to our player, we can continue writing the code. The process function is fairly long, so let's just get, I'll copy and paste it bit by bit. That was me testing, so we don't need that. If the input is action, just press shoot. So you'll need some inputs. And the input map I've got here is shoot, left, right, jump. And I was going to do a retract thing, but it wasn't working. So I thought I'd just not worry too much about it at the moment. If input is action, just press shoot and not hooked. Well, we set hook to true. We get the position of the ray cast um, to the global, to the mouse position and turn that to local. And so the ray car shoots out there. It doesn't matter if we're clicking where we're clicking, it just shoots to the mouse. We force the ray cast to update. And then if it's colliding, we get the values from the ray cast. We get the position of the hook, so the hook pause, and we set that as the collision point. So if you click somewhere behind it, if I go up here to my world, if my player's here and I click up here, it's gonna end up hitting somewhere here. So we don't have to be super accurate with it, which is cool. And then we also get the collider that it's colliding with. Then, next lot of code. If the ray collides with the hookable object, we're going to move the pin joint and the hook to it. So if the collider is in the group hookable, we're going to set the pin joint global position to the hook position. We're going to set the hook global position to the hook position. We're going to set pin joint dot no B to get path to hook. This is an interesting one because we can't just say it's equal to the hook. We need a path to it which I haven't seen before, but that's how we need to do it. Then we're going to rotate the hook. This is the graphic, so it's at the right angle. And that's what this code here does. Direction equals hook position minus global position. Hook dot rotation equals direction dot angle. Now, we want to make it so that when we release the mouse button, we're free. That's what this code here does. If is action just released, shoot and hooked. Hooked equals false. Pin joint dot node B equals node path empty we can't just say equals null it needs to be a node path even if there's nothing in that path then we're going to draw the line oops if hooked we're going to clear all the line points we're going to add a line point at vector 2.0 so the origin of the player then we're going to add a line point at the line end global position and convert that to a local point and that will add a Two points for the line start and end and it will look nice else we're going to clear all points if we're not hooked now we're just going to write some very very rudimentary platform code here so we're going to check if we're grounded because rigid bodies don't have is on floor as a function and we're going to keep this pretty simple var grounded equals get contact count greater than zero while i remember you'll want to go to your player and go to the solver and turn contact monitor on max contacts to at least one uh, if you don't do that this will not work and you'll never be able to jump the rest of the stuff will work but you won't be able to check if you're on the ground um, no this is this will also work if you're on the ceiling uh, we're not too worried about that like i said this is a very rudimentary stuff um, if we press right and we are grounded or hooked then we apply an impulse vector to right and save for left and same for jump if you have increased the mass of the player you will need to increase the force of the jump here to compensate now that's the that's the whole script and this is how it works so i can rotate around i can swing around um, you do get some like there, there, there are a few issues. Okay, I can swing all the way up there. And there is also a problem with that, um, which I haven't really figured out why it's doing that. Uh, I think it's to do with the, the bounciness of it, because if I turn the bounciness down, it doesn't happen. Um, where is it, the pin joint? If I turn the softness to zero, I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. But it also kind of feels, I don't know, it still happens. 
Yeah, that's a weird one. Don't know why that's doing that. It's, it's kind of strange. Um, it should be going to there, but it's going out that way as the player continues to uh, fall. But I'm not sure why that is. For the most part, it does work. If anyone wants to fix it, because you can download this code below, uh, you can, I've just put the whole project up on GitHub. You can grab it and have a look. If anyone wants to fix it and let me know some suggestions, I'll be glad to fix that GitHub project as well.